What are the secrets behind developing the Barky Demon Brain? Can you learn to diagnose diseases as efficiently as Yojiro Hanma? And is there a genetic reason why Jack Hanma can't use the demon back? Hi guys, and welcome back to Doc Off Call. I'm Dr. Maddie, your doctor from the UK. And in today's video, I'm gonna be looking at the long requested video on the Barky Demon Brain. Now, if there are any other topics that you'd like me to cover, for example, Pickle's Anatomy, or anything from the up-to-date manga, please let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, if I could ask you to support this channel by giving this video a like, I would really be grateful. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's begin. So it looks like Barky's been put through a CT or MRI scan to detect the amount of injuries that he sustained after his fight with Pickle. Now normally we'd only CT scan the part of the body that we were concerned had been injured, rather than exposing the whole body to radiation, which can be harmful. However, in a case where we're anticipating injuries all around the body, we can order what's called a diagnostic CT, where the whole body gets scanned. And to be honest, I'd probably be recommending this to anyone who's gone up against Pickle. <laughs> Yeah, so just thinking back to some of the ridiculous injuries that Baki has sustained, whether that's at the hands of Yanagi, where he's been poisoned, crushed by Biscuit Oliver, or dropped from a height of over 50 foot when fighting Pickle, I'm quite surprised that he hasn't gone to see a doctor sooner. However, considering Barky's history with this doctor in the Maximum Tournament, I'm not surprised that he hasn't rushed back to him. <laughs> Yeah, so even if the scan did detect something that was abnormal, Barky says that he wouldn't quit fighting. And we've got to remember as doctors that for those people who want to be the best, they've often committed their whole life to achieve this goal. So before we judge whether they're making a sensible decision, as doctors we really need to try to see it from their perspective as well as our own. But I do like this last comment here that if you don't hear back from us, then everything's likely to be fine because this is what I tell my patients. Unfortunately, a lot of my time as a doctor is spent snowed under by normal results and I can't spend the rest of my time calling up people just to tell them they're fine. <laughs> So here it looks like Dr. Kuriha is looking at Balki's MRI head results. The main difference between a CT and an MRI scan is that an MRI scan tends to give you far more detail of the organ you're observing. So in the context of Balki's brain, it's allowing us to see more of the surface anatomy of the brain where you can see these grooves and fissures, but also it gives you finer detail when you look through slices of the brain as well. And I think that's what he's looking at with all these other screens dotted around his desk. <laughs> so, looking at the superficial pattern on Barky's brain, both the neuroscientist and Dr. Kuriha have identified this unusual pattern of a demon face. But is such a pattern possible? Well firstly, let's explain why the normal brain looks the way it does. You see, the highly folded or convoluted appearance of the brain serves many different functions. Firstly, the way in which the brain is folded significantly increases its surface area, and this allows the brain to pack in far more neurons into a smaller contained space. And much like a computer, the more neurons that you have available, the greater processing power of the underlying brain. 
And just to compare the demon brain to the average human brain, you can see how far more compact it is, which might account for some of Barky's amazing physical abilities. Secondly, over millions of years of evolution, the brain's surface has become more folded and complex to allow species to adapt and develop more sophisticated cognitive abilities. And so a highly folded brain, like Barky's demon brain, would therefore be associated with more advanced cognitive skills. Which makes me question whether it's this that allows Barky to perform his unbelievable visualization training. What do you guys think? Lastly, it's important to mention that the folding pattern of the brain isn't completely random. You see, different regions of the brain are responsible for different functions, such as sensory perception or motor control. And the specific folding pattern of the brain is there to segregate out all of these functional zones. I wonder whether with Barky's demon brain, if this pattern allows for more integration of the motor and sensory parts of the brain and allows him to have these super fast reflexes. So to answer Dr. Kuriha's question as to whether the demon brain correlates to the person's character, I think he's asking the wrong question. Rather than someone's character causing the brain to fold this way, I think it's actually the opposite. I think the characters are born with a demon brain and this dictates the type of person they then go on to be. But it might be for characters to unlock the true potential of the demon brain that they need to go through certain checkpoints. So for example, do you remember how Barky's character changed after he went through pee, -pee training? Equally, I feel like his character changed even more after his battle with Pickle. <laughs> Yes, so this is very true. The human body holds a lot of secrets. In fact, what we consider today as knowledge is based off of current scientific understandings, meaning that if more understanding were developed, then our knowledge would equally change. For example, something like consciousness, which we take for granted. The mystery of how it arises from all the different brain's components is something that we still don't fully understand. Okay, so although we don't think that the folds of the brain relate to one's character, a concept that you might find interesting is that of the cortical homunculus. And this is basically a visual representation or map of the human body on the cerebral cortices or the outer parts of the brain and it can be separated out into a sensory and a motor map. Let's take a look. Firstly, if we look at the sensory map, body parts that have a higher density of sensory receptors like the fingers, lips and tongue are represented with larger areas on the cortex, while parts of the body with fewer sensory receptors like the arms and legs are represented as smaller areas. And similarly, looking at the motor map, we see it assigns more cortical space to body parts that require finer motor control and coordination, like your hands, fingers and face, and areas like the arms and legs have smaller proportions. I wonder which parts would be prominent if we looked at Barky's homunculus map. <laughs> So in this scene, Barky openly admits how his mother wasn't a usual woman, and Yojiro noticed this too, with her having an unnatural taste for violence. And the fact that Yojiro chose to have a child with her specifically makes you wonder whether Barky's demon brain is something that he inherited thanks to his unusual mother, or whether it was something he developed over time. And me, having a scientific background, I think it's a bit of both. So we do inherit traits from our parents through genetic inheritance. We get half of our DNA from our mother's chromosomes and half of it from our father's chromosomes. Get ready for some real Barky science. Let's draw out a genetic family tree. So we all have 23 pairs of chromosomes with all our genetic information on them. A baby takes one of those chromosomes from their mum and one of them from their dad. Let's represent a chromosome as X. 
and let's represent the gene for the demon abilities as a big D. And the little d is that you don't have the demon traits. Let's say to be able to utilize the demon abilities, you need to have two pairs of X big D. If you only have one pair, this means that you're a carrier of the demon gene. So in scenario one, let's say that Yojiro has a baby with a person with no demon gene. The possibility of their offspring expressing the demon back is 0% as the outcome for all offspring are x big d, x small d, meaning that they're carriers of the gene, but they don't express its traits. Now in scenario two with Barky's mother, who has an unusual taste for violence, let's say this stems from her being a carrier of the demon gene. Then if we pair her with Yojiro's chromosomes, the chance of them having a baby with the expression of the demon back and brain is now 50%. So maybe it's a combination of Yojiro's genes with that of a demon gene carrier that allows you to have a child who can carry on the lineage of the Hanma demon back. And this might help to explain why Jack doesn't express these features. Either his mum wasn't a demon gene carrier, or he just lucked out with what he inherited. <laughs> So building on what we were just describing in that you need the right genetics, you also need the right environment. It's possible that Baki's mother built an environment of emotional neglect, physical training and isolation from society to bring out Barky's true potential. You see, there is a proven process known as neuroplasticity, whereby the brain has the unique ability to adapt and rewire itself depending on the environment it finds itself within. Therefore, providing an environment with the right stimulus, that being violence, might have been what helped to mould Barky's brain this way. <laughs> Gosh, Yoshiro seems pretty ruthless with his words. He seems to have planned this out, almost like putting together all the ingredients to make a cake, with Baki being the dessert. I wonder whether this recipe was handed down to him by his own father, Yoshiro, to allow him to produce a suitable heir for the Hanma bloodline. <laughs> So, Baki was willing to do all of this to get the much needed attention and love from his mother. But could this neglect have been part of Baki's training? And what is the impact of the absence of love on the developing brain? Well, in short, both love and emotional connection are essential for healthy social development. It's been shown that a lack of love and secure attachments in early life can lead to a whole host of problems, including attachment disorders, ultimately affecting the person's ability to form secure and trusting relationships later on in life. The way that this might have manifested for Barky as an adult is that he would only rely upon himself and his own strength rather than anyone else, which sounds to be in keeping with Yojiro's philosophy on life. And here we're seeing the moment that Yojiro kills Baki's mother in front of him, which of course must have been traumatizing. But how did this go on to shape the person that Baki is now? Well, in earlier scenes, we see that Baki's motivation to fight Yojiro came from his desire to get his mother's approval and affection. Whereas after witnessing her death at the hands of Yojiro, clearly his motivations would be shifted towards revenge. Now, the reason that this is interesting is that research shows that in human psychology, there are two types of motivation. Firstly is extrinsic motivation, whereby a person is motivated by factors external from themselves. For example, a student studying for an exam may well be motivated by the reward of getting a great grade. And this has been shown to be a weaker form of motivation, because if you take away the reward of something external, like a grade, then this affects the student's motivation to study. Whereas the second form of motivation is intrinsic 
motivation. And this is where a student is motivated by wanting to improve themselves, with the reward being self-improvement. I wonder whether Yojiro killing Baki's mother was him trying to flick that switch of motivation so that Baki could achieve his potential in unlocking his demon back and his demon brain. <laughs> Okay, so here we're seeing Baki doing more of his visualization training in preparation to fighting Yojiro. But now that we know that he's got the demon brain, is there a better explanation for how he's able to achieve this? Well, remember that we said that with the more folds in the brain, the greater the density of neurons, and the more neurons, the more advanced cognitive skills. Let's look back at the demon brain compared to the normal human brain, and you can see that there are far more folds in the demon brain than the normal one meaning your cognitive powers are far stronger if you've got a demon brain, which might just explain how he's able to do these visualization training exercises. <laughs> I have to agree there that regular health checkups are actually really important. I mean, vomiting up blood in this way could be down to several different serious causes. The top of my list are either lung cancer or something like a liver problem. Whatever it is, vomiting up large volumes of blood definitely isn't a good sign. <laughs> Okay, so this is pretty cool how Yoshiro is able to detect people's illnesses as weaknesses, which kind of makes sense. So this isn't too dissimilar a skill than what I practice day to day as a doctor. From as soon as our patients walk into the door, we're picking up on both verbal and non-verbal cues, like looking at people's nails, the colour of their skin and hair, to detect if there are any subtle signs of a serious illness. And with Yojiro having fought so many different opponents, he's pretty much seen probably everything you can, which would probably make him a specialist of the human anatomy. Also, it's nice to know that if I've got a patient and I don't know what's wrong with them, I could always refer them to Dr. Yojiro. Anyone needing a referral, let me know down below. <laughs> <laughs> so, his skills are more fine-tuned than a stethoscope and an x-ray machine, and he seems to know more than any doctor or any surgeon. Hearing this does make me wonder whether Yojiro has the demon brain as well. This might help to explain how he's able to take so much information from his surroundings process it and then use it to his advantage? Or are there any other structures in the body that can also be demon-like, such as the eyes, your hearing, or other senses like your smell or taste? Or is there an underlying demon gene like we spoke about earlier? Hmm. So it looks like from looking at these x-rays that this character may well have lung cancer, as you can see all of these patchy white areas dotted around his chest x-ray. And if I was a guessing man, I would say it's likely down to all of his pipe smoking. Now when cancer is really spread around the body like this, it can make it really difficult to treat. But you know, when you've got a bucky doctor to hand, I guess anything is possible. Okay guys, well we've covered a lot of science in today's video. Video, and if you have any other questions, please let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, if you want to check out more, why not check out one of these two videos? But if that's all for today, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.